Hello, my name is Tim Lawrence. I'm the Pearson LXL Psychology Subject Advisor, and this is a short exam technique video for students and teachers of GCSE Psychology. We're looking at a 12 mark question from GCSE Paper 2, November 2021, about questionnaires. Here is the question, and it comes at the end of this context which students are given about the bus peri aggression questionnaire, which isn't on the specification, so it's not something they're expected to know about. Uh, instead, it's a, it's a bit of novel context to apply their knowledge of questionnaires to. So uh, let's have a quick look at assessment objectives. So as you may know, uh, psychology assesses three assessment objectives at GCSE. And in this 12 mark question, there are four marks available for each one. So the first four are for knowledge and understanding of questionnaires in general. The next four marks are for linking that to the context that's given. And then the final four marks are for evaluation, so strengths and limitations of questionnaires. Now the examiners at the end of each season of exams produce a very useful report on what went well and what students could have done better and these are available on the edXL website and um, from this series they uh, for this question just outline what it was looking for and then go on to say what went well so lots of candidates in this paper were good at linking the uh, knowledge to the stimulus material but very few of them gave clear AO1, which is the knowledge of questionnaires not linked to the context. So let's look at that in a bit more detail now. So the mark scheme has what's called indicative content. That means you don't need to mention any of these points to get full marks, but they are an indicator of the sort of thing you could write. So there's four points here. One is about closed and open-ended questions and linking that to quantitative or numerical and qualitative or um, word-based data. And then we've got the idea of retesting to check for reliability, the idea that there could be bias or leading questions in questionnaires, and the idea that you can give them to lots of people and get a good large sample. So that's all AO1 knowledge. Now, if we go back to the full question, and remember you can pause this video at any point if you want to, to read it carefully, then we can see that there's several points that we could pick out here. Um, that link to those AO1 points. So this is a five point scale and you then total up the score to get quantitative data from the closed ended questions. Um, there's a point here about the date um, and the fact that we can administer it online. So the fact that it was developed in 1992 and has continued to be used, we could link that to the idea about testing and retesting and checking reliability. And we can also talk about the online administration of a questionnaire like this as being a, a really good way to get a large sample um, and check reliability and get accuracy that way. Finally, we could also use this. I tell my friends openly when I disagree with them as an example of a, a comment that could be interpreted in different ways. So that's subjective. That's not as, uh, as scientific and um, repeatable as an objective measure. That could be a sign of aggression or it might not. So that's a, a weakness that we could refer to. So having a look at AO3 content, which is in the mark scheme just on the right of this slide now. Uh, again, this is indicative. It's just a flavor of what um, you could write about if you had a question like this, but um, we could say a limitation of this method is that um, the, the participants who respond can't explain why they've ticked the boxes they have. Uh, however, a good thing is we can replicate and see trends over time. Um, a bad thing is this issue about subjective statements, which might be interpreted in different ways, and that's a problem for validity. And finally, we've got um, a positive point we could make about large samples. Now, again, you don't have to mention all four of those to get a full mark answer, but they are an indicator and you'd probably want to cover at least two or three points like that. It all depends how much depth you write about each one. So let's have a look at a good answer. I'm not going to read it out. If you want to read it, you can pause again. I'm just going to uh, quickly outline the structure of the answer. So it starts with some AO1, which I'll highlight in blue on each slide. This is knowledge of questionnaires in general and open-ended questions. Then we've got a link to Bus and Perry that shows uh, that, that they understand how that applies in this case. And then we've got some evaluation about misinterpretation. And again, I'll stick with that color coding here on the next 
page, we've got some more evaluation offering a counter argument to that uh, previous green paragraph. Then we go in and repeat this uh, structure again with some AO1 followed by AO2, applying it to the context and then evaluating. Now notice they've written more for evaluation, which you might feel you need to. Um, but the most important thing about this answer is the strength that it is continuing with this structure, showing understanding and knowledge of questionnaires in general, then applying and then giving strengths and weaknesses. That is repeated here again. And finally, on this slide, we have a little bit more AO1 and another link to Buss and Perry and a final conclusion. Now, conclusions are important to get into the high mark bands for AO3 evaluation. They don't necessarily have to come at the end and teachers and examiners marking work should look for conclusions that are given throughout the answer. But it is a good idea to make sure that you've got a conclusion by putting one in at the end as this answer has. So if you want to try and decide what mark uh, this was awarded, pause now to think about it because I'm going to reveal now. So here's the top level of the mark scheme, level four. This is a level four response. The AO3 is particularly strong and the AO1 and the AO2 are just good enough in terms of the uh, amount of detail given to edge it into that top band. Therefore, it's 10 out of 12. And uh, that is it for this video. Thank you very much for watching.